Darwin writes, hey, I was wondering if we could discuss an issue that happened in my school today. I think you'll be interested. I called out the teachers for not following their own rules, and they got me in trouble. All right. Darwin, welcome to the show. Hey there. Please, if you would, introduce yourself to the audience. Um, hello, I am Darwin. I'm 13, Asperger syndrome, special needs student, goes to Fridley Middle School, I guess. That's just a quick summary. I don't know. Well, no, thanks for sharing that. I, I appreciate this. Well, what's it like being, uh, you described yourself as a special needs student. What, what, how does that work? And it, 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 this is a government-run school, correct? Well, it's a public school. I believe it's um, just uh, run by the city or the state. I don't know, but it's just um, just a school, I guess. I don't know. It's, um, I'm a bit uh, shy. I don't know. I'm sorry. No, no, it's great. I really appreciate you calling in and, and having the courage to share this story. I got your email and w was really impressed. And for a while we thought, no way a 13-year-old wrote this. It's way too well composed. Certainly not one that's going to a government school, but you're obviously uh, you know, pretty intelligent. And you know, in, in a way, Asperger's, it's from my understanding, at least sometimes grants people special powers. And you seem to have now the ability to stand up to authority in a way that most of the common drone students in your school don't seem to. Why don't you tell us the story with the cell phones? Well, um, yeah, uh, sorry, uh, um, okay, uh, so I was going to school, homeroom started in, they were going over the rules, I was asked to put my phone away to hear the rules, so they were just going over the expectations, like the dress code, and hallway behavior and everything and when they got to the phone part i knew that um why they put made me put my phone away so i just look over to the side because i'm used to this like i see the teachers using their phones all the time when the kids are doing work and just in the most inappropriate times i believe um one time a teacher was playing candy crush on his phone next to a student while they were doing the academic tests and it was just, I know, it's just, wow. Well, the, in, the, the intellectual example being set there, Candy Crush, I mean, that's, that's stunning. Yes. So you, and, actually, you actually went and called out these teachers, right? How did that unfold? Well, I looked to the side because I knew one of the teachers was going to be on his phone. So I saw the paraprofessional and... Quick summary of a paraprofessional, it's like the helpers for students with special needs. Like, they hang around in the class and guide you through the work and everything. Mm -hmm. Now, does, so, this, does the school say that the rules only apply to students, or does the school just say these are the general rules of conduct for the school? Um, these are just uh, the general rules of conduct for the school. They um, had it on a PowerPoint, and we're presenting it, one of the homeroom teachers, because we have two in our special needs program. Mm -hmm. And so what happened you know, when you raised this issue and, and, and who, did you, who did you actually confront? Well, um, I was, after the presentation though, or somewhere in between the presentation, it's a bit hard to remember, but I was in there, I look to the side, I see him using his phone and I call out in a clear, strong voice, something strong but not rude, mm -hmm. Mr. Teason. No phones in school. This, that's the rule. <laughs> I mean, I love it. It's great. Just straightforward. Hey, the rules are the rules. And you're just pointing out the hypocrisy here. But what happened after that? Well, um, they start, Miss Nelson, my one homeroom teacher who uh, was with me in the para, started getting angry. And they were telling me, no, no, don't say that. That's rude. Like, you're being really rude right now. And I'm like, well, you're supposed to follow the rules. If you want people to follow the rules, set an example. And the pair, um, Mr. Teason, points out that another guy was, another one of the pairs was using his phone as well. So I call out to him, well, don't use your phone either. It's the rule. And so they're not trying to dispute and say, oh, no, that only applies to students. They're just saying, no, the rules in general don't apply to us because we're the ones with the authority here, something like that. Yes, they basically, um, in a nutshell, their only excuse to get out of this was we're the teachers and we get special privileges. These rules are for the students only. 
So what happened to you after this? Well, we got into a debate and I was just pointing out all the things and eventually my homeroom teacher was fed up. So she sent me down to the office and I had a discussion with the school dean, which I guess you could say is like a, the higher level next to the right. principal. Right. And so I was just talking with them and a summary of what the dean said was student it's rude for a student to inform teachers of the rules or enforce the rules on the teachers and right there i was just wow <laughs> do you think this has something to do with the government's general intent through the takeover of the education system to condition american kids to blindly follow authority Exactly. That was my whole point on this is that, well, if we didn't question authority, slavery would never have stopped. We wouldn't have gotten over the Holocaust or anything because that's what happens. And that's what's going to happen if we keep blindly following authority is more slavery, more Holocaust, more stuff like that, because there's going to be stuff like that no matter what happens unless we choose not to blindly follow authority and take control man that's brilliant i'm so glad you called and i'm so glad that you're standing up in this way and i know it's a a small token of resistance but I, you're really setting an example for your fellow students and i hope you take advantage of that captive audience to, to wake more people up it's very encouraging to know that it, it seems to me you know from from the uh, old age of 32 here that the the, the younger generations that i have so much hope in and being so much more enlightened by technology, are able to see through the conditioning the government is trying to impose on you. Right there, that summarized all my thoughts, is that <laughs> we need more of the younger generation waking up because they're going to be the ones leading us in the future. We're going to be getting to your age, your level of power eventually, and I'm afraid we're going to have to clean up the mess that uh, these guys have made for us over there sitting on their money like <laughs> yep all right darwin thanks so much for the call and thanks for giving us hope today really appreciate it hope you'll call in again soon sir this is your last whoa whoa hey 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 and this is law and order